Mr. Gatto, the defense at this time, formally accuses you. You were the murderer of Miss Missy Fay. It's hard to believe this may be true, however. Once again, Mr. Wright has brought up a disquieting fact about you. Mm. Not to mention, where the hell did you come from? Just make sure you don't fill out the indictment in red ink, Gramps. <laughs> come on, how does a little graffiti make me into the killer? Besides, it's not like it's my name that's written there. This is rich. Do go on, Trite. Oh my god. The answer is right there at the crime scene. In the snow? In the snow. The snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If they wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not take out just that area? because they couldn't see the blood in the snow, either. Oh, man. Isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not with the torches lit. Not a chance. But you couldn't see those, either, could you? It seems that once again this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. To say the least? Can you explain this, Mr. Gatto? <laughs> what? Yes, I love it when this happens. Whoa, whoa, wait, what? Was it you? I thought Von Karma was going to come busting in here. Are we going to see her again at all? Mr. Gatto isn't the killer. After all, he didn't even come to the Inner Temple. Until two days after the murder took place. Okay. Is he a time traveler? Objection. Maya. It's only, he called her by her first name. You can't testify to something like that. Why? What do you mean? I mean, I look like it, but I'm... <laughs> oh, what was he about to say, dude? After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. What? Well, I guess if you if you say that in the sense that she was... You know, channeling someone, then she wasn't technically there. Are you seeing our old man? We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, right. <laughs> of course! Please, Your Honor, let me add to my testimony. Nick, please listen to me. My, uh... Do you plan to cover for Gatto no matter what the cost? That's the case, and I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to be in this corner for another five hours, so be it. Ha. Huh. Nicely done, Trite. I didn't say anything fancy there. All I said was, let's hear her testimony. Gee, that took so much courage to do. Well, I guess it kind of did, though. You know, because... Jesus, doesn't he, hasn't she had enough? After you woke up. Okay, she's just gonna go right into it here. So after I woke up, I began channeling. And my spirit left me. So this is after you did the whole thing with Mia, right? Because didn't she ask Mia for help at one point? She, like, wrote a letter to herself, turned into Mia. Mia read the letter, wrote one back to her, and told her what to do. She couldn't have just woken up and started channeling right then and there. At least I don't think. Do 
that little girl, you know her name, don't you? Oh god, please tell me she's not dead and someone's channeling her now. Okay, thank god you still know her name. <sighs> Pearly was also stuck on the Inner Temple side that night. The next morning she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Gatto arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. <laughs> I would have liked to see that. Who is this Pearly? That's my little cousin, Pearl Faye, don't you know? So when did you hear about this? She's been in court with me before. Just a while ago. The way she said Gatto cheered her right up goes right along with the theory that he's her dad. Because that would still make sense. Like, if he's her dad, then he could... Well, that would make me a sort of, like, his sister-in-law, wouldn't it? I don't know. Do we have a Boone Shannon situation on our hands here? I don't know. Once you heard from someone else, it's simply not admissible as testimony. The testimony itself is just what we heard from someone else. What's the big deal? Probably would never tell a lie. She's a way more honest person than I'll ever be. <laughs> it's way to go. Oh man. <laughs> the prosecution has no objection. We believe the witness. Mr. Gatto. Let's just move on to the cross-examination. Okay. Nothing unusual about it. I'm coming on. Get this cross-examination started. I'm coming up. Blah, blah. Curly was also stuck on the inner temple side that night. Oh, side. For a second I thought that said stuck on the inner temple that night. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Just climb on top of it. So where did you think Pearl slept that night? In the spare prep room next to the training hall, I guess. There's a rule that you can't enter the training hall during an acolyte's training. But even so, why did she go to the inner temple in the first place? Seems the pearls became very worried about Maya. She knew that the spiritual training I was about to go under the, the it was very intense. The pearls were supposed to channel Dahlia, but she couldn't do it. That's why she headed to the inner temple to see what was going on. However, Dahlia was already there, possessing the body of Elise. Right. The next morning. Oh. The next morning she looked around, but couldn't find anyone. That's scary. She searched the entire inner temple side, end to end. Even the bathroom? Shut up, butt. Just because I say bathroom doesn't mean you get to rip one. Well, you see, Pearly gets pretty scared when she's alone. And there weren't that many places to look. She says she even went back and forth several times. The Inner Temple side has two structures. A training hall and a spare prep room. There's a lot of talk about the spare prep room for something we've never seen. I think also a storage shack. That's about it. A storage shack. Huh. Really? Why is that? The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. Alright, so she probably slept there. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, well, the construction guys have this thing. They don't like people staring at them while they're working. So she just stayed in there. Oh. Poor little girl. All alone like that. Well, we know that she had at least one friend in the sacred cavern. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What happened after the bridge was finally fixed? Well, after that, she left. <laughs> That's when Mr. Gatto arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time. Okay. So it was your first time on the Inner Temple side, Mr. Gatto. What are you questioning me for? I know, witness! Hmm, that's funny. Am I imagining things, or did the defense ask me a question? <laughs> Mr. Wright, please save your questions for the witness. <laughs> what you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. Those are your words, Your Honor. Touché, Mr. Wright. <laughs> so, oh well, so what do you have to say, Mr. Gatto? Hot nights and even hotter coffee. That's what I always say. If it hadn't have been for this case, I never would have visited there. The freezing cold temple in the mountains. I think I'll pass. Oh. Alright. You want to say something, Trite? A lot of things, actually, but mostly questions. That's... Uh. Okay. So, find a crack in his armor while cross-examining her. This is a final boss battle if I've ever seen one. Alright. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. This... This tells me something. He cheered her up. Yeah, he bounced her on his knee, you know. That's what Pearly said. She said he was a very nice, older gentleman. Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Gatto. So happy. And here I was thinking you were nothing more than a coffee addict. Huh. <laughs> Cut it out. You're making me blush. Well, it's not like anybody. It's not like you can see that. How would you even know what blushing is? This guy's really getting into going on nerves in more ways than one. Truth is, there aren't that many places to look on the Inner Temple side. The policemen were all busy going over the garden with fine tooth combs, and they didn't find shit. So I decided to carry out an investigation in my own way, Gatto style. I'm the same way. I like to hand down verdicts in my own way. Judge Ito style. Then your brother, he hands him down Hoser style. Maybe I should ask some questions Phoenix style. Um, cheering pearls up. Yeah. When I found that little munchkin, the first thing she asked about was her cousin, my faith. Really? The bridge had burned down and she was huddled up in that tiny shack with no heat. Even though she must have had a truly terrifying night out there. She asked about you before she said a thing about herself. Oh. I noticed you weren't anywhere on the Inner Temple side. But I couldn't find you didn't mean to tell her that. So I gave her my last cup. <laughs> with milk and sugar. To hide the bitterness of the harsh truth. Well, what a sweet story, story, Sniffle. He had a thermos of coffee, why doesn't that surprise me? The thermos! The thermos! There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Gatto when the murder was taking place? He was probably in bed off at the Hilton. Who even knows? Hmm. No, but seriously, he was there. He was totally there. Okay, Gatto's investigation, let's do it. 
You said that you conducted an investigation of your own. Did you find anything? Looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trite. After all, I did miss the bloody writing on the lantern. <laughs> yeah, you bloody did. Speak for yourself, goggles. Goggle boy. The beauty? You mean the picture of... Misty? Yeah. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Yeah, I was gonna say he's talking about the gravy. <laughs> so from there, you headed for the prep room. Huh. Did we just find something? Did we? I almost want to read that again. <laughs> the hue of western... Ugh. I'm gonna read that again. Shit, I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god, this is so sloppy. Misty Fay, naturally. Glider strange Japanese are surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Yeah. So he has a thing for Japanese outfits. What would that have to do? Well, the first thing I was thinking actually was if the thing's covered in gravy. How would he know that she was even wearing Japanese garb? The thing is, how do I... Well, well, hang on a second. We have the scroll, don't we? Where's that statement again? <clears throat> no, not that one. Let me see it. See Faye's image. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so if he knew it was Misty Faye, he had to have been there before. There you go. Bingo! Mr. Gatto. The first time you crossed Dusky Bridge and went into the Inner Temple was long before the murder took place. There's your weakness. Why do you say that? Because he just made one fatal slip up. The hanging scroll in the training hall. But Mr. Gano is right! That scroll shows a picture of my mother! Maya, I know you know who it is, but there's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired two days after the murder, the hanging scroll in the training hall looked like this. What's that wonderfully delicious smell? <laughs> I wish I could have farted then, but no, my butt doesn't have anything. So, the morning after the crime, someone covered it with a gravy train. Gravy train? But why gravy, Nick? Because gravy was much more than a condiment to the culprit. Well, Mr. Gatto, if you really hadn't seen the hanging scroll until after the murder, you wouldn't have had any way of knowing that it was Misty Fay. No, don't defend him. Take another look at the hanging scroll. Look, at the top! There's a crest there! This is the mark of the master. Exactly, so if you know the meaning of the mark, then you could guess that it was a picture of Misty Fay on there. But he was going on about her outfit and everything. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> yes, O is right. It's also round. It's a letter of the alphabet. <laughs> the 
But they always wear Japanese clothing. That's what the... Okay, we'll take it, though. God, this guy doesn't even flinch, man. Can I ask you just one little thing, trite? Sure. Bite. This whole theory of yours, it all rests on a certain assumption. That I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. That's right! Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak onto the crime scene. Unless he did it. Of course Mr. Gatto knew about the plan. Uh-oh. Is it really possible that another person knew of that plan? Oof. Ooh, let's look at the thing. Be careful. Once my falls should be there. Once night falls, should be there. That's weird. Okay. Bring our vengeance to fruition? Is that it? Because she's saying our vengeance? Possibly. Hang on. I can't save, can I? Ugh. No, I can't, but I'm pretty sure that's it. This crime was actually planned over a year ago. Morgan Fay authored the plan for her daughter's future. And these instructions were hidden somewhere in Fay Manor for a year. However, by the time Little Pearls found these instructions, they had already been unsealed. Oh, that's right! Oh my god, I forgot about that part. Yes, the killer had read these instructions long before Pearls ever found them. That's how he knew the crime was to take place. And you're saying this crappy killer is me? Why, I'm honored, Phoenix. But you just said the instructions were hidden. That's right! Mr. Gatto couldn't have known where the instructions were hidden. I'm afraid not. If he really wanted to know, he had one great chance to find out. Yes, and when was that? During a visit. Oh my god. Morgan Faye told her daughter Pearl about where the instructions were hidden during one of her visits to the detention center. Yeah. I don't think so. Well, well. Uh. Well. I don't know. That's kind of. I would have thought more like maybe he, since he's dead, then maybe he. Well, he couldn't like deliberately possess somebody. But it's feasible. Maybe like Morgan could have possessed him. I don't know. What if he, right now, is, like, possessing somebody? <laughs> so, like, I don't know. This murder could not have been carried out without prior knowledge. And you? You were the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder! Nope. He has a counterpoint. Humans are afraid of the dark. You're afraid of the dark too, Marv. You know it. Don't lie. At the same time, we're fascinated and bewitched by it. Maybe that's why humans drink the darkness. That is coffee. Mm, sorry for always asking, but what does that mean? It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case eavesdropped on a conversation during a jail visit where he learned of a hidden plan for a crime. After discovering the plans, he hid in the Inner Temple and waited for the crime to occur. 
then he ultimately took a person's life. And he did all that just to protect this witness? Hmm. If you're accusing me of this crime, I have to ask you. Why would I do this? This girl's nothing but a stranger to me. I have no reason to go through that kind of trouble to protect her. I am what you see. I'm certainly not the type to rescue the damsel in distress. Are you sure about that? The killer's behavior is certainly extreme, for lack of a better word. For lack of more than words. Even considering that the killer wanted to protect this witness's life, his behavior is still a little too unnatural. Unnatural, there's that word again. However, you had a good reason, didn't you, Mr. Gatto? An unshakable reason that forced you to protect this witness at all costs! I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Maya. I guess you were doing your best to cover for Gatto. For the same reason, huh? Same reason as what? Oh, same reason as he was protecting her, I guess? Okay, try it. I'm all ears. Let's hear it. It's very simple. Maya Faye is a lot more than just a stranger to you. There's one person who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and Maya Faye together inextricably. Oh, we already know. 